You are a young dragon knight, the love child of Rivalon's first emperor, Sigurd. Alas, your father was brutally murdered by his own sons and daughters, and now they're waging a bloody war for the throne. This ship you're on, the Raven, has been given to you by the wizard Maxos, for he is certain that you are the only one who can reunite the Empire and establish peace once more. We are now on the bridge of the Raven, where you will plan your conquest. Before diving into that, though, there is much more to be done on board. So, let us proceed to the throne room, where the Council gathers to address important political, economical, and sociological problems. You are an Emperor, after all, not a mere warlord out for gold and glory alone. I was dangling millions in front of you. Each decision you take influences your Empire in a variety of ways, be they of a political, military, or other sort of nature. Speaking of the military, if there's something you don't want to neglect, it's the bids and requests of your generals. Their influence on the battlefield is not to be taken lightly. Have a sherry to calm those nerves. In the Queen's quarters, decorated according to her taste, you can have a chat with your wife. What this chat will be about depends on which princess you choose to marry. As Queen of the Realm, she has to contend with all sorts of dilemmas, and it goes without saying that political sensitivities, too, tend to lurk around the corner. You only need to take a look at the Rivalon Times headlines to see how well your policies are being received. On to the engineering bay, where you research new units and upgrades. Equip your dreaded juggernauts with imp bunker busters, for instance, and lay waste to entire bases at once. Or perhaps you appreciate a bit more subtlety, in which you could opt for your Zeppelin's cloak ability, which will let your army slip behind enemy lines unseen. Don't forget about your dragon powers either. You may be a mighty creature from the start, but being able to cast destructive spells like Pillar of Flame or Turning the Tide by charming key enemy units is not to be spurned. After all this is said and done, let us return to the bridge and cast a conqueror's glance on the strategy map. The strategy map is your key to victory if you make your moves wisely. Other than building armies and moving them about the map, there is a great variety of things you can do that influence the Empire as a whole. For instance, you can erect buildings that increase your gold and research abilities, or recruit mercenaries to even the odds. Several strategic tricks you can play come in the guise of cards. These allow you to do fun stuff, like sabotaging your enemy or giving yourself unfair advantages. Inevitably, combat will be in the offing. Though you can choose to let your generals or the Imperial Army do the dirty work for you, nothing beats spreading your wings yourself and leading your troops into battle. On the battlefield, it is imperative to build resource citadels to secure a steady influx of fresh recruits, which you'll need to create an army. Units are produced in structures like battle forges and aero factories. All that's left now is to obliterate the enemy, unleash the destructive prowess of the Devastator, direct your bomber balloons towards the advancing foes, watch on as your ironclads torpedo enemy ships and pluck airborne adversaries from the sky. Or watch on no longer and take to the skies yourself. Heal injured troops, engage enemies on the ground and in the air. Show them you are the dragon and finish them off with a well-placed eye of the Patriarch. Glorious. If you want to go for a quick fix, you can play skirmish battles against AI players. Try out new strategies or see if you can beat the insane mode. There's even a custom campaign mode which features a fully randomized storyline. Once you are familiar with the game rules, why not try your hand at LAN or online multiplayer battles? You can, of course, play skirmish matches, but the multiplayer takes on a whole other dimension when you play a campaign with or against others. You can even change the game rules to your liking. When you've got the hang of it, try playing on our ranked servers, and your battles will count towards your score on the global leaderboards. Not only will you be matched with players of equal skill, you will also earn bragging rights once you hit the Major League. Larian Studios presents Divinity Dragon Commander. Command massive armies. Become the dragon. Master the art of war. Forge an empire. All hail the dragon. Hail. Hail. Yes, well, hail.